What's up, guys? See that there's a couple people watching. Uh, I don't know if the the live chat is working, so let me know by leaving a comment, even if it's just like a check mark or whatever, just so I know the live chat's working. gonna go check over on uh, my phone to see if the live chat's working or not because um, I'm viewing this on my uh, laptop but I'm still not getting any notifications that any live chats are coming through so I just want to see if maybe that's just a problem with my computer or if they are coming through and I just can't see them I'm gonna ignore the delay um, that's just because again I'm watching this on my computer to make sure everything's going going correctly. All right, so I'm still not seeing any live chat. Um, so if you guys can do me a favor and just like put something random in the chat just so I know that it's working. and try and get as much of the sculpture done today as possible. All right, so it is working. What's up, man? Going pretty deep here just so I can get these areas in.
probably one of the most overdone cowls, but um, I want to take my swing at it. Right now I'm just kind of roughing in where I want stuff to be before we actually start like tweaking everything and making it Okay, so I basically have the rough shape that I want the cowl to be. So now I'm gonna start 
actually sculpting everything in and making it look a lot more like the BVS cowl. So I like to start on the face. I don't know why. I just prefer that when I get this area good to go, um, it's just easier from there.
what's up. We're just sculpting the BVS cowl because it's what won on my Instagram poll. Thank you. What do you think is the best live action Batman and have you seen the new Rubies, Pattinson, Cowl? Um, my favorite has always been Keaton, um, but after seeing the Batman, I'd, I'd say Robert Pattinson is my second favorite for different reasons. Um, I've always just really liked the Keaton world. It's like that's why it's always been my favorite movie and I don't think it'll ever be surpassed, just for me. Um, but I like the Batman because of the detective aspect. I don't think any other version of Batman has ever delved that much into the detective aspect of Batman. And then in terms of the Ruby's Pattinson cowl, um, I don't think I've seen it. I've seen the, um, the China version, like, that you can get from, like, wish.com. I had it, but, um, 
I don't think I've seen the the Ruby's version. For some reason I got all the details here, but it's just not looking right to me, so I gotta keep tweaking it until I'm happy. I think these need to come forward a bit more because this is really bothering me. No, that looks bad. Put that back. Pattinson is my favorite. Then Keaton, nice, yeah. I like Pattinson. He was he was good. I uh, I jumped on the you know I don't want Pattinson train, but that was because I hadn't seen any of his movies except for Twilight. So I was like, I really don't want that guy playing Batman. But um, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. And then of course when the trailer came out at DC Fandom last year. Or two years ago, I can't remember when that was. Um, I was like, holy crap, that looks good. Considering the equality issues. Nice. I haven't seen it, but I have seen the Ruby's re-release of the, um, uh, what are they? The 89 one. And also, um, I think they re, they redid their 89 and they redid their Batman vs. Superman and they redid the um, the Dark Knight, and all three of those re-releases look really good. Um, I really wanted the uh, 89 one. My friend was going to get it for me, but then I decided against it. I just didn't really have room in the collection for it. I used to have a whole bunch of cowls, but I just got rid of them all. Now I just have my... Um, my 89 stuff I've just got all my Keaton stuff still got rid of everything else but it was older the 1992 version oh yeah yeah the one that they just re-released is like really good like my f I saw a review of it online and I was like that that can't be real and then one of my friends got one and I was like holy crap like that's really nice especially for Ruby's quality I know that they're more focused on mass production than they are quality so I've never really been a Ruby's guy Oops. This app is kind of finicky sometimes. I'm liking this, but for some reason it's still looking kind of off to me. I think it needs to be skinnier. squeeze this in a bit does it start to look better it 
No, oh, looks weird, huh? I think that's looking a little bit better. It was really bothering me for a little while there. I was like, why does this look so strange? I think this also needs to come up a bit. I think all of this just needs to come up just a smidge. It was really bothering me. It doesn't look right. It looks a little bit better in my eyes. Mine has an issue though. The stitching on the Velcro go was completely off. So in the middle of the Velcro, sometimes weak spots. So I have to. Oh, yeah, that's Ruby's quality for you. This also looks kind of weird just because it's not got the asymmetry yet. I'll add that later. Um, it's just it's easier to sculpt symmetrically and then add the asymmetry later. supposed to be really like beefy looking so there we go that looks a little bit better looks a little bit more proportional it was a little wide before but now it looks a little bit better I think once the texture's on this too, it'll look better. Right now it's just really flat. It looks kind of weird. This cowl is like, it seems really simple to sculpt, but then once you actually start sculpting it, you realize just how much like stuff goes into making it look right. And also, yeah, like the fact that the Texture's not on it, makes it look really weird. I'm using the Ironhead Studios um, images to sculpt this one. I didn't want to use anything else because uh, so many people have done this cowl. So if I just copy one of their sculpts, it's just going to look the exact same. So I'm only using um, images from Ironhead themselves. Just so that mine, even if it's not 100% accurate, will still look different than everyone else. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm aware of the neck muscles on the back. I just haven't gotten there yet, but we can add them in. Rough them in real quick. Let me see. I got a reference image of the back here. I do. All right, where's crease? Looks like there's three of them. And they start at kind of the base here. Actually, one of them does. One of them kind of goes like this. And then there's one above it. That's a little too high. And the one above it that kind of goes like that. And then there's another one that kind of goes like this. So I'll deepen those a bit. And then pinch them. smooth them out so we've got those roughed in 
And then there's also some um, that are kind of within here, little ones, and they're not very prominent. So I'll just put those in, pinch them, and smooth them out. I think also this part needs to come in a little bit. Make this look a little bit more round. And smooth that out. No, I don't like that, it looks bad. Add a little bit of clay. Help hide that. And then we'll smooth that out. I really like playing music when I uh, when I do these. It helps me stay inspired, but because of like copyright and stuff on YouTube, I don't want to chance it. Because the minute you start playing music, um, you get hit with like a million copyrights. I guess I could have put headphones in. I didn't even think about that. I could have done that. So I'm really liking this. I just gotta like sharpen everything up and make it look a little bit more accurate. But overall, I'm liking the look of it. These need to be more straight. So we're gonna straighten these out. Pinch those. Try and get them a little bit straighter. All pinching does is uh, it kind of tightens up all your details so they're not so loose anymore. Um, the app that I use isn't ZBrush. It's basically a ZBrush clone for the iPad. Um, I really like the control that I have with the iPad pen. Which is why I haven't switched to ZBrush yet. They have copyright free. They have a few different music. But their jazz is really good. Cool. Um, what, uh, like, just here on YouTube? Like, playing just copyright free music on YouTube, you mean? Okay, let's pinch this. Make it straight. It goes up behind the base of the ear. There's that muscle. And that muscle. And this muscle's a little squiggly. It goes all the way up to the back of the head. Pinch the ears. Yeah, I really like the pinching tool because it just it sharpens everything up really nice. And I also feel like this comes out a little too much, so we're gonna we're gonna straighten this out just a little bit. Turn down that. I think that looks better. Yeah, and then we're gonna flatten it just a tad. I, I remember that when uh, the images of this cowl came out, the ones that I'm looking at right here, um, it was a lot more square than it looked on screen. 
Yeah, on YouTube, I say most of their stuff is copyright free. The name of the channel is Track Tribe. Walk Through the Park is a good song by them. Okay. Doesn't really sound like my my forte. I'm kind of a 80s metal guy. I like my Guns N' Roses and Metallica and stuff. Lately, I've actually gotten into this one artist um, that I heard at work. Um, I work with my fiance's brother uh, for my day job. I'm an insulator, so I insulate homes. Um, and they had this one guy they were listening to called the The Last Knife Fighter, and I really got into that guy. His stuff is really good. All right. Pinch all this, make it nice and sharp. This part needs to be a little bit more straight. Actually, that looks wrong. It looks really wrong in the corner there. I think it's supposed to come to more of a peak. I think this part's supposed to come out a bit. this and then it just kind of joins at a, a peak here so let's pinch that again but let's get it to That looks better. You don't like jazz or blues, though? Um, I like some blues, but usually like ballads. Kind of bluesy ballads. I'm not really a, uh, a blues guy, but... I like ballads that are kind of blues-inspired. Just gotta make sure we have enough extra here this is a uh, this flange that goes around the cowl some people ask about it um like why am i leaving space here i want to just sculpt the cowl that can be like 3d printed and stuff cowls are always best done in rubber so the best way that you can achieve that is by leaving a flange around the cor around the edge so that whoever prints this um can mold it and if you leave a flange, it makes molding easier because you won't have any undercuts and stuff. So you leave this flange around the cowl so that they can sculpt the cowl. I mean, not sculpt, they can mold the cowl onto the flange and then it'll come off in the molding process really well. I'm really liking this. Looks good to me. So it might be time to add the asymmetry. I think I got all the the main elements here. I'm just gonna look at it from all the sides. Face looks kind of wrong. I think this needs to come back. There's the move. This needs to come back, kind of like that. And the nose also needs to come back a bit and be a little bit more straight. Kind of like that. And this still needs to be coming to a point. And this isn't very straight. This needs to be straighter. out to more of a peak keep it straight so his nose is kind of difficult because it's like um, it's 
it's arched, but it needs to be kind of straight at the bottom, so it's kind of hard to achieve that. Do you like the Arkham Knight cowl? I actually hate that one the most out of all of them. Like, I loved the Arkham Origins cowl probably the best. I, I loved that suit probably the best. It just was really aggressive looking, and I just really liked it. Um, and then next, I really liked the Arkham City, obviously. It was really nice. And then Arkham Knight was probably my least favorite, just because I didn't I didn't like how much of a... Like, it looked really bird-like to me for some reason. Like, it looked, like, really bird-like. And I, I just wasn't really a big fan of it. It was it was okay. And it's like it served its purpose in the game, like the armored look and stuff. But I really wasn't a big fan of the, the bird kind of aesthetic of it i think this whole part needs to come down a bit whoops let's turn that up let's see what was i doing here let me go back i feel like this still needs to come down a bit this. No, that looks wrong. See, that looks good, but for some reason it's just really bothering me. Yeah, just kidding. That looks horrible. <laughs> um, I don't like the ears on the Arkham Knight cowl. They're too pointy. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't like the nose. I thought the nose was really bird-like. Was it really... Uh, Greed Origins is my favorite from the Arkham series. I just, I really liked the look of it. Like, I, I don't know why, but Origins always kind of looked the best to me. I wonder why this is bothering me so much. Maybe this is supposed to come back a bit. Maybe that's why. Yeah, I'm looking at these images of the cowl from uh, from Ironhead, and the cowl from the side. I basically got it, but the face is looking a little weird from the side. So I missed something here. So I'm just like zooming in on the face from the side and just trying to get this right. Hmm. I think this is too arched. It's gonna be a little bit straighter. I think this comes out too much, which is what's bothering me. I think this is supposed to be, well, not out too much, sorry, back too much. I think it's supposed to be up here a little bit more. It still looks good from the front. Let's see here. Have a good night or day. It's 1 a.m. for me. Oh, have a good one. Sorry I started so late. I tried to start midday, like my time, because I was going to do this last night, but and then I was like, what's the point? No one's going to watch it, you know? I think this needs to be pinched a bit. I still need to sculpt the bottom here. I completely forgot about that. I was almost ready to start adding texture and asymmetry, but I still need to sculpt the bottom of the cowl. I forgot about it. It's easy to forget about that part. Yeah. There's no images of the cowl from this angle. So 
So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wing it. I'm gonna assume and just fill this in. I'm going to assume it's relatively flat. Like the other ones. And it probably has some nose holes. So we're going to flatten this out. Smooth it. Looks like that part needs to come on a bit too. There we go. Um, okay, so we smoothed it out, and then I'm pretty sure it probably needs nose holes, so I'm just going to add those. Right here, and we'll pinch them. And then smooth it out. Um, I don't know, I'm liking it. Looks pretty good to me. I thought this one was going to be really, really difficult. But um, I started just kind of roughing in the shape last night. Just so I had something to go off of for today. So it wasn't like watching me sculpt from nothing. It's always more interesting once the sculpture starts to take shape. So I didn't want to like have everybody watching just like this blob of goo start forming because it would probably would have taken me a really long time. So I roughed in kind of the shape of the cowl, just a rough understanding of what it would be. And then started today's sculpture with actually sculpting it on top of the rough shape. Pinch this. Looking good. Thanks, man. What do you create your models in? I know that you model some stuff too. Your bat cuffs and stuff. I tried Tinkercad and I wasn't very good at it. And then I've been trying to model Iron Man helmets in Blender, but holy crap, Blender's hard to learn. Remember, is there a lip all the way around the cowl or does it just come out there at the bottom? Because I might have just messed that up. Let me see here on this image. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty straight until the bottom. Okay, so I got that basically right. It's a little too sharp though, like this area here, the lip. You can see it's like looks like a fat lip. It's supposed to come out just a little bit more. So I'm going to have to fix that. It's not supposed to come out just to look kind of generic. Well, not generic, but like look more organic the way that it comes out. Kind of like this. And then I fucked that up. So we're going to straighten that out. Adding some clay. This I add some more clay down here too. It's a big bulge. There we go. 
I'm liking it. I use Tinkercad because I'm a degenerate who can't, who can only sculpt things out of shapes. Yeah, I tried Blender, but I can't get the hang of it. Dude, I watched, like, I watched so many tutorials and I just don't understand it. Like, I'm thinking about getting, um, I think it's called Cinema 4D for 3D sculptures, except for it's pretty expensive per year. You have to pay, like, yearly. Because um, it just, it looks a little bit easier. Like, it's kind of a point-and-click, drag, drop, you know? And I'm, I like that more than, like, oh, I need to smooth this out. I'm going to hit F F7, like... 8901 and then it does one thing like I don't under I don't like keypad encodes I really don't like I like being able to like like you see here I like being able to sculpt drag and drop move and like have a lot of control whereas like there it's like it looks so difficult because you have to like learn all the the encodes and like everything like shift one does something and like 1272 does something and i'm just like what the hell like i'm so confused i have no idea like and then you watch people do like time lapses on like youtube and it looks so easy they just drop a image in and they trace it out and then two minutes later they have the whole like helmet and stuff and it's like what i'm just like i'm still looking at the screen like what how the hell did they do that Yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't think I'm ever going to get the hang of Blender. Like, there's there's a guy on um, in the in the costume group that's like, he kind of pissed me off a little bit. Like, with something that he said. Like, as an artist, you have to be able to take, like, criticism and stuff. But he keeps saying this to me over and over again, and it's really starting to, like, annoy me. He's telling me that I have to, like, learn um, ZBrush. He's like, you're never going to be on the level of any of these other makers until you learn ZBrush. And I'm like, you know what? Like, my sculptures are good. Like, I'm not cocky at all. I'm a very humble person. But, like, my sculptures are good. I know they are. Have I had any sales? No, I haven't. I'll admit that. No one has actually bought my stuff. They, like, say they will, or they're, like, you know, super excited about it, but they never actually purchase it, and it's getting kind of discouraging, you know, even this, like, a lot of people want me to sculpt this. I know it's not going to sell. I know that not a single person is going to buy this. Whatever. I still enjoy sculpting. Would it be, you know, it would be nice if it went somewhere and, like, one of my sculptures would actually sell? Of course. But... I don't know, I'm just getting really frustrated with this guy telling me that until I learn ZBrush, I'm not going to make it anywhere. Like, I have ZBrush. I have it on my computer. And it it's literally this. This is literally the exact same shit. It's just that this is an, on an iPad, and it's not called ZBrush. But apparently, because it's not done in ZBrush, it's just never going to, you know, amount to shit. I don't know, it just it really frustrates me when people do that. When people say that, like, this is the way to do it, or you're never going to, you know, succeed. I, I say, you know, like, fuck that. Like, whatever works for you and you enjoy, just keep doing that. And I enjoy using this app, and I'm able to get results. So, you know, if Tinkercad works for you, then, you know, all power to you. And, like, if Blender works for some people, then all power to them. Now, the fact that I can't, like, trace out everything obviously makes everything, you know, that I do... Um, a lot longer because like I actually have to like model the whole thing myself but I think that's a testament to who I am as an artist too like the fact that I can create the same thing as somebody else but I actually sculpted the whole thing and all they did was drop in an image and trace it you know I've heard good things about ZBrush but your sculptures are really good I think the big issue is marketing sounds like this guy is super it's just gatekeeping and nobody likes a gatekeeper. Yeah, he's one of the guys in the group. He makes his own stuff. I'm not going to mention his name, but um, 
I had a deal with him for a while. I was doing sculpts for them. But then he just kind of dropped me and didn't want to use me anymore, which is fine. Um, but he's, he's like, come out and said, like, numerous times, like, until I, you know, learn ZBrush, I'm never going to make it as an artist. And it's like, you haven't sculpted anything either. Like, you buy your sculpts from, like, Art Divine and, like, Hernandez and stuff. Like, so maybe don't tell people who do have the skill to do something how to do it better when you can't do it at all, you know? Like, his stuff is good, but again, he didn't make any of it. He just bought files from other people and offers them. So, there's no artistry behind... Well, there is some artistry, I'm not going to lie. There's artistry behind molding and casting and making things look really nice. You know, but there is no... Like, it's not the same amount of artistry as, you know doing the whole thing. So I just, I think that's kind of hypocritical of them to be like, you know, you won't make it until you learn this specific version of doing it. You know, like, why would this, why would this program exist if it wasn't meant to be used? Like it would say in, in the ad, like, Hey, you can use this, this, you know, ad, but I mean, you can use this, uh, this um, program, but it's not ZBrush, so don't expect your stuff to ever be good, you know? <laughs> exactly, you're freelance, you're freehanding these things, and they come out on par with people who just trace images. Yeah, well, ZBrush, I don't think you're able to trace. I know that you can, in, like, import reference and stuff. Like, I'm able to do that, too, in this app. Like, I have references here of stuff that I'm um, sculpting. And I can drop them in if I want. But, um, like this one, I'm just using reference off my phone. Because I'm just doing a live stream and it's easier to just do it this way. So I do use reference. I don't just, like, remember what these things look like and sculpt them completely myself. I am using reference. But with Blender, especially the Iron Man guys. Like, it's, it's bigger in the Iron Man and, like, the helmet industry and, like, the armor industry. Um, people that do that stuff, they just literally drag in an image from the front, the side, and the back, trace out all the angles, and then all of a sudden they have an exact replica. And that's awesome, but, like, where's the artistry behind that? Like, I'm sculpting everything by hand. Like, yes, I have some aids on, like, I have my... Like, in this app, I have um, symmetry turned on, so I only have to sculpt half. But, I don't know. I think do it your own. Like, if, if Blender works for you, that's awesome. If ZBrush works for you, that's awesome. And if this app that I use works for you, that's awesome. Tinkercad, whatever you want to use works for you, that's awesome. I don't think that there's a specific way to do anything. Which is why, like, when I changed my, uh, Adam, if you're still here, um, when I changed my name, um, it was to disassociate myself with this YouTube channel and, um, the costume group. Because, like, I post my stuff in there all the time, and I haven't had a single hit. And I think it's because people don't necessarily know that I'm the one making them. I think that they think that it's Hernandez or whoever, and I'm just sharing you know, in the costume group, but like 90, actually, no, not even 90, a hundred percent of the things that I share are my own design. And I haven't had a single person message me about one curious about one. And I think again, it's just because they just don't realize that I'm the one making them. They think that I'm just, you know, sharing somebody else's. And, you know, whatever. That's fine. If they don't know, I'm not expecting everyone to know everything. But uh, but that's the reason why I, uh, I decided to change the name of, the, of my art. Was so that people would stop just associating it with my group. And realize that I'm actually the one doing this stuff. Completely forgot these little wrinkles here. So 
another one down here. These are cool, but they're really hard to get right. Like one false move and you got like eyelash Batman. But um, it's a lot easier than uh, than ZBrush because ZBrush, I have the uh, the basic version of it. I think it's called like ZBrush um, Basic or something. So like a lot of the uh, features are gone from it. It's just literally a sculpting app for my for my uh, laptop. Um, but one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of people are scared that they have to start from nothing. But I'll show you real quick. Let me show you. I'll just save this. It's a little bit wider because like to sculpt cowls, you need a little bit more space. So I just make this wider and that's literally all you do is you just point and click. That's it. Point and click. And then what I do is I, I take clay and I fill in this ear and then I flatten it out. And the reason I fill it in is so that it all flattens uniformly. You literally just flatten this out till it's basically gone. And then I just clay this back up. Where's clay? I just clay this back up. So now you have a blank canvas for a, a cowl. And, um, this basic version, uh, like this basic thing here is a very low poly version. So you just go up here to this cube and you remesh it to the highest that it can go. So that'll just take a second and that'll make everything that you do a lot sharper. And um, like you're, you're able to do way more once you remesh it, the, the most that it can go. I'm actually thinking about doing like a, like a tutorial series for this app because a lot of people, you know, are scared of ZBrush. So if you're scared of ZBrush, this app is so freaking easy. So there you go. It, it breaks up all the polygons into way more. And then obviously to, to sculpt a cowl, 90% of the cowls have sharp necks. So I always start from the ear and I just make this really bulky, just a straight line from behind the ear all the way down. Like this, just fill that in, make it more flat. What's up? Just showing Adam something right here before we go back to the sculpt. And then this, you just kind of build up, make it a little bit more bulky. You're literally just, you're literally just dragging the pen over the, over the sculpture. That's it. That's all you're doing. And then I build this up a bit, build up the shoulders a bit. And then you go to pull. Oh, sorry. Where's pull? Pull. I turn up the intensity. And then you just make sure you're grabbing the side, make some ears, and then go to move. And I just drag these to the back of the head. It's gonna be really bulky up here, but all you do is you just use the move button or the move feature to move them back out. This is literally how easy making a cowl is. And then I take the, uh, or is it clay? And I just build these up a bit. Sometimes this happens, it's kind of weird. And just smooth it out. And then that goes away. And 
And then I grab the pinch and I just pinch them. Wow, you've gotten so much better, very talented. This, uh, yeah, this is just a basic little understanding of how to make a cowl in uh, in this app. Um, we'll go back to my sculpture in a second, and then, oops. Turn this down, you just need to draw where the mask starts. A jawline. Just build that up with clay. Build this up with clay. Add clay at the middle of the nose. Now this is just this is just basic how to how to get a, a cowl like started in this app. And then usually what I do is I add a little bit of clay here. Oops. And here, and then here, and then you just use the pinch. And move this. just pinching. Oh, it's kind of weird. Get rid of the eyes. But I don't know. It's it's basically pretty easy to do. Getting a cowl sculpture started. Oops. So there you go. You have like a basic template of what to sculpt on. I'm gonna skip save. That was just a demonstration. We'll go back to the, the sculpture that we were doing here. But, okay, let's bring up my references again. Honestly, I think a tutorial series on how to use this is a great idea. Most tutorials on these kind of apps, softwares, kind of sped up videos. You know what I want to do? Like, I want to do a tutorial on how to sculpt a Batman cowl, start to finish. Just a generic Batman cowl. Because... When you look up, like, 3D Batman sculpture, it's always a time lapse with music, and it's, like, five minutes long, super fast, you know, and I've done them too, but they're never really what I want to see, right? Like, you look up a tutorial, and it's usually someone sculpting, like, an old man or something, um, or they're sculpting, like, just something random showing you the basics, but I want to, like, show how to do something like this, like, start to finish, like, how do I do it in this app so that people who want to make cowls or make Iron Man helmets or make, you know, 
masks, you know, understand the basics. And this is like literally a ZBrush clone. All right, so I'm gonna add that asymmetrical eye now. So this is gonna be a little daunting. I know it's just a little bit raised, so I'm gonna turn off symmetry. And I know it's this eye. Now, I'm actually gonna move this eye a little bit down. I don't know why it's not moving. Maybe I'm click. am I on eyes? I'm on bust. Why is this not doing anything? Hmm. What move? Was I on pinch? I think I was on pinch, but for some reason it was doing some weird stuff. So I'm going to move this eye a little bit down. We're going to turn the strength down so it's not super drastic. So we're going to make this eye just a little bit straighter. And then this eye, we're going to raise just a little bit. Not much. Okay. So I'm liking that. Because, like, the asymmetry on this cowl is not very... It's not very, like, super noticeable until you squint at it. So you don't want to, like, pull his eyebrow way up here. Because, like, that's not right. So you just want it to be, like, really, really discreet in the way that you hide it. Yeah, that looks good to me. So it's not super high, it's not super low, it's not super obvious that it's asymmetrical. Now, one thing, did I accidentally, when I did that, did his eye raise too? I think it did. I think I'm going to move this down a bit. Just using the reference here. And then I realized that this eye, when I did that, raised it a bit. So we're just going to put it back down. I'll turn symmetry back on for a second. I'm going to move these. What the heck? Why is it being like that? There we go. And move these in a bit. Not much, just a little bit. And these are really bothering me still, so we're just going to go back in here and pinch them. actually work I think people really enjoy it yeah I hope I hope that it would you know help some people out that are discouraged to do this stuff you know I'm really liking this this looks good to me it doesn't look like every single other person's is it the most accurate I don't think so but it gets the job across. It looks really good in my opinion. I think these need to be built up a bit. His cheekbones, just a little bit. I'm going to build these up just a little bit. Because I remember that they... They kind of... They kind of come out just a bit. And then we'll smooth that out. Yeah, looks good to me. Just move this down. Move that.
Hmm. Why is it being like that? Hmm. I don't know. I like it. I think it looks good. Now I know that there's some extra lines here on the one side. There's the crease. A little bit extra. I gotta go make dinner, so I'm headed out, but keep up the good work, man. It's looking great. Thanks. Have a good dinner, dude. Okay. Ch -ch -ch. 